you know, once you feel confident in the car, know the limits, then go to race mode and yeah. and have fun. Are you an attorney or something? That's kind of sounded like. No, I don't like attorneys at all. Oh, okay. It's because I've done millions and millions, millions of laps and millions in with my Lotus. <laughs> <laughs> John, how, how exciting is this? This is awesome. This is awesome. We're driving the 2020 Lotus Evora GT. This car is um, really a, a Sebring, practical, Sebring. everyday yep. um, exotic from uh, Lotus of Naples has granted us this privilege. This car has 416 horsepower, 317 pound-feet of torque, six-speed manual transmission, which is absolutely glorious. This manual is just fantastic. One of my favorite things about this car, though, is when you look in the rearview mirror, you see the engine, and you can watch the supercharger wastegate open as you apply throttle. It is really fun to watch. The brakes in this car are really good. The suspension is fantastic. And the pedal placement is just perfect for heel towing. So really, this car is, from a value proposition standpoint, starts under $100,000. And bang for the buck is pretty significant. It's a car that is really a, a practical, exotic you can drive this car to work it's a two plus two so if you needed to put some kids in the back or something you could all right john so uh what's the bottom line takeaway bottom line takeaway is uh this 2020 lotus Evora gt is uh really a a uh, force to be reckoned with on the track the gearbox is brilliant isn't it yeah a short shift um really tight gear ratio the clutch and and uh, pedal positioning is really well done um, this is a hand-built car in england i mean it's it's um you know it's a it's a custom you know uh exotic car it's true, so it's a toyota engine which is bulletproof um, you and I know that because of our uh, uh, Exige ownership over the years, and uh, the car is easy to maintain. It's inexpensive to maintain. This car comes with a three-year, you know, full warranty, anyways. But um, but it's comfortable. It's a really comfortable. You know, lots of carbon fiber, but still really comfortable to drive. So so who buys this car? I mean, you know, you and I, we know plenty of people that have plenty of cars and. And, and I think, you know, I was at lunch with somebody the other day, you know, and the guy's got a, a couple Ferraris, and you talk to him about going to the track, and he and he's not going to take the Ferrari to the track, but isn't this the kind of car that, that, a, that a guy purchased it and maybe already has a supercar or something, and this is what you have in the stable to just go to Sebring, put it on the track, be able to enjoy it, and then not spend 10 grand on brakes and... Totally sure. agree. Totally agree. Uh, carbon fiber ceramic brakes on the, you know, on the 488 are twenty five thousand dollars. You know, I mean, this is this car is, um, it's a it's a great everyday driver. Um, you know, really a kind of a uh, everyday exotic, and you can take it to the track and beat on it for the day. Have a wonderful time driving home and. And you don't have to, you know, have to worry about putting miles on it. It's a thing. I mean, a lot of the Ferrari guys have, you know, 2,500 miles on their car, and that's the most they'll ever have. You know, they drive it until then, and then they don't want to, and they'll never dream of, of putting it on the track, like you said. It's just too much at risk. But you know, this is a very exotic looking, just a really unique automobile, and very, very track worthy. 
really, really track worthiness. If you don't want to be unique and and original and have something that's that's actually pretty rare, then don't buy a Lotus. I mean, yeah. it's that's you're gonna be uh, you're gonna kind of stand out in the crowd, especially with this canary yellow, uh, which is really brilliant on this car. Really interesting, but. 416 horsepower, 317 pound-feet of torque, 188 mile per hour top speed is no slouch. I mean, that's like, you know, 911, uh, you know, GT3 speed. So, um, on that back straight at Sebring, did you pay attention? Yeah, I did. Like, yeah, I did. About 130 was what yeah. we were, which is res very respectable. Yeah, and uh, and we weren't pushing it. No, we certainly weren't. Riding with you uh, on that on that lap was really the pleasure of my day. It was you, your line was fantastic. Your everything was just was just so well done. You're not just saying that. No, I'm not just saying that.